and welcome to my channel thanks for joining me today I'm gonna do a little review of the Dr. Z Jetta 112 combo amp now this is a really great amplifier for a lot of reasons but above all else it's a Dr. Z and if you've never played a Dr. Z they're built really 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 well they're what you call heritage quality or I'm sorry heirloom quality amps so that you can pass these down to your kids is basically what that means they're built so well they're going to last forever and it really is if you've ever looked inside one of these things it is a work of art dr z does a great job i've owned several dr z amplifiers and this one is just fantastic now the jetta is a little different than a lot of the stuff that Dr. Z has put out before. Now, I have owned a Route 66, a Z28, and a Carmen Ghia, and they've all been really great. This one is different. It's, it's kind of designed like an old-school Fender Tweed amp. It's got Tweed-style transformers, from what I understand, but it also uses the 7591 power tube, which gives it a completely different feel than a lot of the other stuff that you're going to see out there. It's not really like an old school tweed amp in a lot of ways, but then again, it is in some ways. It's going to give you a slightly different tonal palette than what you get out of a normal Fender amplifier. And it's, it's just a really cool branch off from the normal everyday thing. It's using the Metro, the Dr. Z Metro buffered um, effects loop, and it does a good job. And I've got it right now running with this particular Fender reverb pedal. And it takes pedals through the effects loop and through the front end really well. And that's kind of a characteristic of most Dr. Z amps that I've ever played. Very few of them come with onboard reverb, reverb, but if you add a high quality reverb pedal like this Fender, you can really get a, a, a really good tone. Mm -hmm. 
And this is at a low volume. I'm going into a SM57 straight into my focus right and into the computer. So I'm not really cranking it up. I'll do that in just a second. So stay tuned. That's just the straight Telecaster with the humbucker and the, and the neck pickup going right into the amp. And you get a really good tone out of it. Now, one of the characteristics of this is that 7591 power tube, and they say it gives kind of a hi-fi tone. And that doesn't, it's not as descriptive as I think it could be. Basically, what that means, to me anyway, is it's a little bit more of a broadband sound. You've got a little bit more on the low end, you got a little bit more on the high end, and a less compressed feel than you would with something like a Princeton Reverb or a Deluxe or, or something like that. Now, this particular amp has got a Celestion uh, G12H in it, and that's a really good speaker. But to me, to my ear, that's a bright speaker in a lot of other applications, but it works really well in this particular one. I uh, have a pretty much a stock amp. I haven't done anything to it except for change the tubes. When I got it secondhand, which it was in perfect condition, but it had some microphonic power tubes. And I have actually had a ton of experience with amplifiers. I've built several amplifiers. I work on my own. I'm very experienced with electronics. And I had never had a power tube go microphonic. So it took me a little bit of troubleshooting to figure out what that was. And I actually sent an email to, to uh, Dr. Z when I was kind of working on that. And they, they were very quick to get back, and, and by the time I heard back from them the next day, I'd figured out what it was. But they still responded to my email in under 24 hours, and you know that says a lot about any company's customer service these days. They did a really good job with that. But replacing those power tubes immediately solved any problem that I was having, and it was basically a brand new amplifier that I got for right around $1,000, which was really awesome because now... I just looked at them on Sweetwater and they're about $2,100 plus tax. So it's not a cheap amp, but you get what you pay for. It really is a, an extremely high quality, hand-built, hand-wired, point-to-point, amazing sounding guitar amp. So all that aside, let's get down to some playing. I'll throw some pictures up here of the different pedals that I use on the front end sometimes in my gigging career, which I play pretty much every weekend somewhere, I usually use one pedal on the front end of the amp all night long. And if I gig with this Dr. Z, I run the reverb through the effects loop. But I'm not a pedal switching guy, so sorry, I don't have that type of, uh, I'm not going to give you something I don't know about. I'm going to play the Telecaster through it here for a minute, and then I'm going to flip over to my 58 VOS Les Paul and let you hear that. So let's do a little bit of this. Here it is, clean, completely clean, straight into the amp, a little bit of reverb. <laughs> audio hot lana pedal with a little bit of slide <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Let's try the old classic tube screamer. Paul now with the same tube screamer setup. convincing cranked martial sound that you can get out of that tube screamer at home playing levels with a good Les Paul. Moving back over to the hot Lana pedal with the Les Paul through this front end, which this is supposed to give us really close to Dwayne Allman at the Fillmore sound, so see what you think. <laughs> And if I drive the front end of the amp a little bit harder with the pedal, we get an even better tone. <laughs> Thank you. 
And here we have the Plim Soul from Full Tone. And this is a pedal that I gigged with for years and years and years in front of my Fender amps and in front of my Dr. Z's. And it's supposed to have a relatively flat EQ curve. Now these days I've been using a Nobles OD-1 into my Vibrolux, but this is my second favorite choice. So here it is with the Les Paul in the middle pickup position. See what you think. <laughs> Now, I like the Plim so particularly because it doesn't cut the bass. In the style I play in my show, generally I'm playing without a bass player and I use a lot of thumb droning strings. <laughs> the bass is still really present and the Dr. Z Jetta does an excellent job at preserving that low end and still getting a nice classic crunchy creamy distortion tone. Now let's check it out with just the amp cranked with no pedals in front of it. And this is with the master at about 10 o'clock and the volume all the way up. So that's what this uh, most of the Dr. Z amps are really known for, is being able to get that nice distortion without actually having to put anything in front of it. For me, I really like to run a pedal in front of most of my amps so I don't have to drive the power tubes as hard when I am actually playing gigs. Now in the studio, all bets are off. I'll do anything to anything to get any tone that I can dig up. And as an example, I burn a Blues Junior up three times in a row recording my second album. So <laughs> fixed it, it's still working real good. You could hear it on my Epiphone uh, 59 Les Paul review. But long story short, the Dr. Z Jetta is a killer amp. The price has gone up and up and up and up and up. It was really affordable. I think when it came out, it was 1300 and it has gone up, like I said earlier, to over $2,000. I think it's $20.99 at this point. So if you find one of these used, the Dr. Z amps will last literally forever. Might have to change a capacitor every now and then or swap a tube or two out, but really it, it's an amplifier that's built to last 100 years. And if you're gonna spend a lot of money, you cannot go wrong with Dr. Z and you want something that's gonna be there for as long as you want it to. So my opinion, the Dr. Z Jetta is one of the best deals out right now. And it's one of the coolest kind of alternate takes, alternative takes on a classic tweed style amplifier. So check this thing out. If you have a chance, play it somewhere. And any Dr. Z amp is a winner, but the Jetta is really cool. And we'll see you guys out in the real world.